female right there. How much do you want to bet that's a female right there? And how much do you want to bet that that's a female right there? And you know how I know that? Because they've been pollinated and fruit is growing from them. Whatever kind of fruit that is. I hope it's not poisonous. Uh, guys, this is, like, this is like science. We're like on a science exploration trip here with the goats. Goats learn about science today. Lester teaches his goats about science. Oh, and his pigs. And look, look who's, look who my best student is. Look who the ones who are the most involved. These guys are the most involved. Shirley loves this science lesson. Boy, these guys are loving science. Those guys are doing their science lessons. Looking good over there on your science lesson. Everyone's involved in their science lessons. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We're missing a student. We're missing a student, guys. Hey, y'all, can y'all see who we're missing? Everyone look good. Can you all tell who we're missing? We are missing a student. We've had someone run off on it. <gasps> look at that. Ringo! Class is happening over here. Well, good morning, folks. Lester here. Uh, it's another steamy July morning, and I've come out today to install something that we were gifted. It's a cooling misting kit. Now, I've seen these before, but uh, there was one we were gifted several years ago that attached to the back of our fan. And when you turn your fan on, the little misters come on and it kind of blows the water across the, the area you want to have cooled. I'm going to go ahead and use it here in our little cooling station. Y'all have to excuse the noise. We have these window unit ACs that are on. And uh, this is the spot where I think I'm going to go ahead and try to keep cool. This is where we keep all of our fresh water. And our animals come here throughout the day. And I hope that we'll... When they come back today, they'll be able to find that there's a little bit of a cooling mist floating around. So y'all bear with me. I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you all what's right, going so on. We've already refilled all the water for this morning. You also know that I've been doing some work on putting these new posts in the ground, and we're going to replace these old landscape timber that are all rotten at the bottom. Uh, I'm not done. I have to get my chainsaw and cut all of these out, but let's just ignore that for now. I think I'm gonna open this up and figure out how it works and try to run it somewhere along the top of this thing and let it kind of mist down over the top and kind of from the top down. See how that works. All right, well, this is very discouraging. Um, I get the mister out, get all my parts laid out. I start with step one, but I'm missing step two. They did not send it with an end plug. And so there's a whole lot of things that has to happen to this. It's a kind of a do-it-yourself system. And so they give you some step-by-step -step directions and instructions, but they did not include all the parts. So disappointed and discouraged. It was a really sweet idea. So thank you to the kind person who sent that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the littles off for their morning walk. Come on, baby, let's go. Come on, sweeties, let's go. So I brought the tractor out yesterday and spread all that mess out. That's where we had our big burn pile. And uh, hopefully we can start having grass grow up through here again at some point. Make that look pretty. How come no one's following me? Come on, littles, let's go! Oh, I didn't holler it right. You gotta holler it right, guys. You gotta holler it right. It's funny watching Jamie or Jake or Ellie <laughs> try to call them. They just don't come to anybody. They're my babies. They come to daddies. Come on, guys. Come on. Oh, I got two pigs coming too. Uh, guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. We need to have a serious talk about something. The uh, heat is becoming quite unbearable. And I noticed something yesterday. Come on, little ones, let's go. I noticed something yesterday that really scared me the way the goats were lying in the barn during the heat of the day, flat. They're lying flat once they're trying to cool their bodies. And it put me into quite a scare because it looks like they're dead. And so I've been having to be real careful with making multiple trips out and around the uh, house to check on them. 
And now I'm gonna tell you something, and you're not gonna like to hear it, but the goats over at Longhorn Lesters are not having the same issues with heat as what these babies are. So now we have another factor to add to the whole Longhorn Lesters versus I'm a survivor. Baby, there's plenty to eat, sweetie. So it's only nine o'clock this morning. It's still not that hot. But the way that their, their behaviors, whenever the temperatures hit, you know, get up over 100, and then of course the heat index is another 10, 15 degrees above that, it gets to be quite brutal. And being that I'm over at both properties every day and seeing how all the different animals are reacting to the heat, it worries me about what could potentially happen you know, where there's not, where they don't have access to the same shade and the breeze that we get over at Longhorn Lusters. I'm not one who really buys into all the conspiracy theories. A lot of folks love to sit there and dwell and talk about that. But the thing is, what I do is just look around and take an assessment on a day-by-day -day assessment. And of course, being that I've lived here all my life, I can also take an assessment. Trudy, please don't do that, baby. I can also look around and think about things from year to year. And uh, I will tell you guys, I do, th I'm, I'm, I'm certain that there is climate change is happening. And it may be subtle. And for folks who live in the city, you may not realize that, you know, one summer your temperatures have averaged this and the next summer they may average that. Hey, move a wall, go. But uh, go, sweetie. You're not gonna sit here and be mean to everything. But um, when you start seeing your ponds dry up and your grass is not growing, and then you can come around the next year and have this severe opposite where you have too much water and you have flooding and there's things going on around the world that worries you and so I don't know exactly what has to happen or what needs to be done or if we've already passed that point of no return or if this is just a natural cycle if in the history of the earth we just don't go through cycles where the climate changes I mean think about it there are deserts now that used to <laughs> where there used to be an ocean we all know that there are, there are deserts now that used to be oceans. So things do happen, y'all. And that was, things have happened long before, surely long before mankind came around and was messing with fossil fuels. There have been things, the climate has changed, you know, through the, surely, surely, that's my uncle Raleigh's. Leave that alone. It's not to scratch on. So I don't think this is necessarily a, a, a chance to finger point about, uh-huh, see, it's the, it's this uh, political party, or no, it's this political party. But I do know that there's some climate change happening, and it scares me to think about food shortages. How about, hey, let's talk about bees. Can we talk about bees for a moment? I think it really does suck that a man my age, and I bet a lot of you have never been taught what they mean by, let's talk about the birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees, because listen, that was only a song that we learned, and it was a naughty, something to do with something naughty, but none of us ever learned the part about science that the song is actually talking about. Where we've learned math and we've learned reading, but we've never learned this much about science as what I've learned from Jamie now that she has her new garden. That there's actually male and female flowers and it takes bees using their magic stick to spread the pollen or to fertilize from the male to the female in order for fruits to grow. Do you know over on Jamie's garden over at the other property, Jamie's little garden, she has a lot of male flowers. 
you heard me right, male flowers. And then there are some female flowers. But if those, if we cannot find bees to come by and do their magic, use their magic stick, we'll just call it their magic stick. If we cannot get some bees to come by and use their magic stick to take and pollinate the, you know, from the male flowers to the female flowers, then your fruit is not going to grow. And guys, we have a lot of things over there that are not growing. And then, hey, I've already said we're not digging around here. Move, Newton. Go, pig, Newton. Go, go, go. Get your hiney over there to the... Go eat something else, Newton. Go. Do you know that Jamie can even look at flowers and she can tell you if they're a male or a female flower? She says... Now, I don't know if this is true or not. She says that whenever you see your garden begin to flower, it will always be the male that will flower first. And then the female flowers right behind it. So here, let's just take these for example. I don't, guys, I don't know what is male, what is female. I have no idea. But let's just pretend that this over here is the male. Let's just pretend. It might be, it might not be. So whenever your bee flies into there and I guess collects the pollen, and then that same bee bzzz, flies over here, bzzz, bzzz, over to here. Now let's just pretend that one of these is a female. And then he begins to, I don't think he inserts the pollen, but I think that he must collect more pollen. And in that process, the pollen begins to fertilize the flower. Look, how much, how much you want to bet that's a female right there? You're not focused. Come on, young man. Would have to be Ringo. Would have to be Ringo. Oh no, it's the AT&T guy. Hope you didn't see me dancing. I really like that the goats on their own, once they get their bellies full, begin to make their way back up towards the barn. Or they've gotten hot and they're ready to go cool off a little bit, get a drink of water. So we came out a different gate today. So I hope I can call them all back in the gate we came out of. Went to this one right over here. Come on, babies. Thank you, Maggie. You did great, love. It's a mad dash to the barn, and Ringo wants to make sure he's first. No one goes in front of the leader. He gets to go pick out the first nice, cool spot. It all belongs to Ringo.